Okay, so if you're following me on Twitter, some of you might have seen the BMW i8 behind Prusa while I visited their factory a few weeks ago. But just to be clear, that's not my car. This is actually what I drive. So this is a 2007 Opel Astra station wagon. It's the best car I could drive. Like it's the perfect car for me. It's cheap, it's big, it's economical. Like it does everything I needed to. Yeah, it's got a few rust spots, but it's got one more pretty fatal flaw that we're actually gonna fix today. So stick around for that. But first, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Stay around till the end for a special deal for you guys and for more info on what they do. All right, let's head in here. So even though this car was built in 2007, it's got like most comfort stuff. It's got heated seats, it's got like cruise control, it's got a Bluetooth radio, which was put in after the fact. But the one thing it doesn't have is any sort of navigation, any sort of smart system. I mean, this is where that would usually be. So what I typically do is I take my phone, plop it in here. That kind of looks like it's supposed to be there. I even like put a rubber strip in here that keeps it from falling out. But the problem is it still falls around. Like this isn't secured in, you know, at all. For example, if you have to take off from a red light. Okay, it stays in there, but sharp turns also stays in there. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> let's see. The thing is, this works as is, but if we have to charge it, like if we actually have to put a USB cord in here, like so. Come on. Like now it doesn't go in there. It's either like hanging out this way or it's all the way crooked. And now if we actually accelerate, let's try this again. Yeah, it just falls out by itself. Same thing, like any, any amount of turning, uh, it's already coming out. So this isn't working obviously. So you can use it without the power cord for an hour or so until the battery runs out. But if you actually wanna plug it in, it's game over. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna design, print and install a mount that just has the phone clipped in like this, like nice and secure right there, just cluck, cluck, really solid, enough spacing that we can plug in a power cord and also not designed it for the OnePlus 3T, but actually designed it for the G6, which is now fantastically starting Android Auto. Auto. That is good. Um, so yeah, this is my full-time phone now and we're gonna measure this out. We're gonna make a mount that fits this perfectly. And I kind of want to use this uh, GoPro style mounting plate. So this actually allows me to remove whatever's in here so that we don't have like this mount taking up the uh, time, temperature and date display in here, which is, I don't know, it's pointless anyways if you have a phone in there, but it just looks cleaner if you just have this standard plate stuck in here and then the clip with the removable phone mount just clipping in and out like this but i think that is a much cleaner look than something that's stuck in there so let's get to designing this thing all right so this is the gopro mount that i want to work off of it's these two parts that just snap together and i think it's pretty much the standard gopro mount these days so the features we're going to have to design are these two slots on the side that's where the main part of that buckle slides in it also has this center guide that slots into this notch right up here. And it also has these two flaps that make up the buckle part that actually hold the top part in place. Now, if you look at the guide section on the side, it's not a continuous part right there. It's actually cut out in the center so that these arms are allowed to flex because the front of these arms is actually a functional part of the rail that holds this entire thing in place. So let's grab a few measurements here. I'm just using super cheap calipers. These are fine because we're gonna be fudging the dimensions anyways. We're gonna make a few test parts and see how well everything fits. So it seems like the total width is 28 millimeters. The total length of this slot is 25. The width of the center guide is three and a half millimeters. So I think we're just gonna use a four millimeter wide slot for that to slide into. And then as we actually measure the height of the main guide on the side right here, we're running into a bit of an issue because the rear part of the calipers don't really fit in all that well. So you have two options right here. You can either use the depth gauge on the bottom side of the calipers and eyeball how deep everything is, or you can use the rear side of the caliper head right there. That's also a measuring part. And again, eyeball it, line it up roughly, and we're seeing that this is five millimeters deep. And I think that's all the dimensions we need. We're going to use this exact mount and just design the buckle part custom to fit this one and just make a few test parts and see how well everything fits together and then adjust the printed part and make it fit. So for the printed clip, I'm basically just copying all the dimensions from the physical clip that I already have and that I already know is going to fit. 
since this is going to be mostly symmetrical, at least for the part where it mates to the bottom part, I do draw these two center lines so I can mirror stuff left to right and top to bottom later on. I actually start drawing out both halves in this one sketch, but in a second I decide that I'm only going to sketch one half and then just mirror the volumetric part instead of creating the sketch twice. I do go over most of the edges that aren't functional with the fillet tool just to make it a bit friendly to the touch, and then I add the center guide, which is just a very simple sketch as well. So I first add the block and then cut out the center slot from the additional material, and that also cuts it out from the material that has already been there. Of course, the nice thing with parametric CAD like this is that you can always go back and change a few dimensions if you find out that it doesn't quite fit, that it doesn't quite work, or if it just looks wrong, you can always go back and it will auto-update all the rest of your design right there. And this is what I love about 3D printing. You can just draw something up, make a quick print, this was literally 45 minutes to print, and just see if it fits, see what changes you need to make. You don't need to worry about getting it perfect the first time because it's so cheap and fast to so just prototype it and go through it with an iterative design approach. In this case, it's actually pretty close to where I want the part to be, but it's a bit snug. I think the wings on the side are a bit too tall, so I actually go back in and make those a bit slimmer. I also widened up the center channel for that center guide on the bottom a bit, because that felt like it was binding a bit. And I did shorten up the entire added section in the center, just to make those flaps a bit easier to press in all the way to release the buckle again from the main mount. So second iteration of this part right here, this already fits much more easily, much better. Um, I do feel like the flaps are a bit too thin now, so I back off of that correction a bit. And that I think is good to move on to designing the actual foam mount. So the basic idea here is that the clip and the foam mount itself are completely independent parts. So the idea is if I ever want to change the mount underneath, so that I can mount it to something else, or if I ever change the phone that I can put in here, I don't have to work off of the same part, I can just take one and leave the other intact. Also, it makes it much easier to print. I don't have to worry about layer orientation. For example, for the clip, you want the layers to be flat, but for the phone mount, you want them to be perpendicular to those, so it wouldn't be possible to really print those in one print anyways. And just having two screws in there is really simple. At first I went for countersink screws, but later on changed the part to fit a thin head screw. This is actually a screw that's used in the open builds system of linear rails. And that's just two through holes through the clip. And those just go into a block, basically, that's going to be hidden away once there's an actual phone in there and once it's actually installed in the car. I'm not going to be using any threaded inserts, any nuts or anything, I'm just going to tap the plastic itself, which, because this is such a long thread, this is almost 20 millimeters of thread in the plastic, and it's an M5, so it's a relatively coarse one, that is fine, like, you can directly screw into a plastic part like this, and it's going to be plenty strong, in fact, it's going to be almost as strong as the screw itself, which is exactly what you want it to be. For the actual phone mount, I'm mostly eyeballing the dimensions here. I know the G6 is 72 millimeters wide, so I guesstimate a radius. I know it's not perfectly radius edges, but an eight millimeter radius should fit. Later on, I've changed that to seven millimeters just to be a bit more snug. But what I'm also not quite sure about yet is what that aperture angle up front with the flaps that actually wrap around the phone should be. So I go in here, I change it to three different sizes, 60, 45, and 30 degrees. So I export these three files and I'm gonna print just a few layers of these to give me an idea of which one fits best. And the winner of those three is what I'm gonna be using for the final design. So while that's printing downstairs, I came back out here to the car to actually check out what the angle should be that the phone is mounted to. So if you just mount it with a straight 90 degree angle like this, you can see that this looks this looks awkward, like this is sticking out. Um, it looks like it's actually tilted down from my point of view. If we actually have it like this, where it perfectly fits in, um, from this perspective at least, if I'm really close to the steering wheel here, uh, I'm seeing the sky reflection from out in the window. Uh, however, if I actually lean back to where I'm usually driving from, that's fine, so that's a good position. So. That roughly looks like a, I don't know, 20 degree angle, 25 degree angle to me. A uh, good thing about 3D printing is we can iterate, we can try things out. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with a 20 degree to start with. And then just like the phone fit, we can have different um, sizing options and just try them out. 
All right. So to get that actual angle into the part we're printing, you may have noticed that I'm not designing this into the sketches itself, but I'm actually drawing up the part separate from the main body that's gonna screw down to the clip. And then I'm using the translate functions to rotate it back, to dip it back 20 degrees, and then to move it into position exactly where I want it to be at the block that's gonna to attach to the rest of the clip. And that makes it much easier to change later on and to iterate, just like the clip itself. So let's check out how that turned out. So the tightest of these three clips, the 60 degree one, is way too tight. Like you can tell, it snaps. The 45 degree one is okay, it's still a bit hard to insert and take the phone out, it still holds it pretty well and it doesn't break, but my favorite here is the 30 degree one, so this one snaps on nicely, it holds the phone perfectly, and it's not gonna break over time. So that's what I'm going for. Alright, I'd say these files are ready to print. I'm gonna print the final parts in a PC ABS from a printer pro. I could also go for the flame retardant one, but if this starts catching on fire, I've got bigger issues to deal with. Now for these parts, I'm actually doing two really cool things in the Slick Theory Prusa edition. First off, I'm using different print settings in one print between the phone clip and the mount for the GoPro plate. For the phone clip, I'm giving it eight solid layers, top and bottom, as well as an extra perimeter shell to give me a bit extra meat to tap into because those two holes at the bottom, those are going to get tapped, so I'm taking material away from the edges. The other thing is that I'm also enabling the option to complete individual parts. So it's going to print the clip first in its entirety and only then start printing at the first layer again for the actual phone clip. And that makes the part surface a bit cleaner and also results in stronger parts because the PC ABS doesn't have as much time to cool between layers. All right, I came out here for the sunset, but this was uh, rather unimpressive. Give me a second, we can fix that. Yeah, better. All right, while we're out here, uh, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easy way to get yourself seen on the internet. Whether you're creating a portfolio for your personal work or you're wanting to set up an online store, Squarespace lets you create the website that is right for your needs. They will take care of the entire tech backend for you. There's nothing to install, upgrade, patch, ever. Simply choose one of their award-winning themes, add your own content, and it's going to look professional no matter if your visitors view it on a smartphone or on a big desktop monitor. So head over to squarespace.com slash for a free trial and a 10% discount off of your first purchase. Thank you, Squarespace. All right, so before we glue everything down, let's actually do a quick dry fit. So this mount by itself, uh, pretty perfect. So there's a bit of a gap up top, that's fine. Let's try with the adhesive and the bottom mount right here. Uh, that's getting a bit tighter, so you can actually see it's pushing up the dashboard right there. But, I mean, I think I actually like this. This is super solid in there. Like we put a phone in here, so that's like it's part of the car now. Uh, I'm gonna reprint this anyways because it's slightly warped, but when I do, I can just move this entire part down a bit more so we get a bit less tension on this part right here. Oh God. Ooh, I don't know what adhesive this is. How do I get it out? Okay, this is... Oh no. Oh sh Okay, that took out a part of the soft rubber coating right there, but whatever, like this insert, I mean, it's got scratches and stuff anyways. Mm. Replacement parts for this car are cheap. All right, quick wipe down, quick degrease to make sure everything sticks all nice and well. Supposedly you should heat this up before sticking it down, but I, I think as is, it's gonna stick well enough already. There we go, that's looking good. Okay, this is never coming out on its own. Let's clip this in. Cool. That, that actually slides in nicely. Phone. Okay, let's take it for a drive. Okay, Google. Spiele Tokyo Machine auf Spotify. In Ordnung, Tokyo Machine soll abgespielt werden. Alright, so this project turned out even better than I expected. 
The holder is super easy to use, it holds the G6 in there perfectly, and it actually looks super clean. As always, if you want to make your own version of this, I'm sharing the design files for free in the description below. You can even make your own changes, adapt it to your phone, or change the geometry to fit your car or horse carriage. I mean, I don't know what you're driving. If you learned something or simply found the video entertaining, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, check out the channel, get subscribed and do hit that bell so you don't miss out on new video uploads. And if you really love the content, consider supporting on a Patreon with as little as a dollar per month. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.